Hi, Luke from Cork here. This is the WaveState SE, our amazing evolution of our WaveState, which was based on the legendary WaveStation technology from the early 90s. Now, what have we added extra? Well, we've got a full-size keyboard, 61 notes, uh, with aftertouch as well, with a premium key bed. We've also improved the chassis as well, so it's all aluminium, feels amazing. Um, we've expanded the polyphony as well, and we've given you some extra sounds to play with to take advantage of the aftertouch and it ships with a luxury hard case as well. So, let's have a listen. So our original wave station for the early 90s had a technology built into it called wave sequencing. That basically meant that you could take tiny little samples and piece them together to create sequences. So for instance, here's an example of that. So if you listen to this, and you can see it on the screen here as well, you can hear it stepping through lots of different samples at different time values and different samples of course. You could also play that with drums as well because it's very rhythmic. So that was one way to use wave sequencing but it became really popular as well for using that in a very slow way. So crossfading between those samples to create all these magical motion like pads like this for example so if i put that onto the right layer you can watch as it slowly evolves through as i hold down a chord So with the wave state, we introduced wave sequencing 2.0. And what that meant was it allowed us to take the wave sequencing concept and give ourselves lots of different lanes to do different things at different rates and different tempos and different directions as well. So if you take an example like this, you can see here that the pitch is darting all over the place, but that's only one lane. So you also have things like timing lanes, sample lanes, so if I bring in some aftertouch now on the WaveState SE, you can hear that's bringing the sample lane. Then I can back off and go back. So it's just manipulating the pitch. So each of these four layers, A, B, C, and D, can be a wave sequence, either slow kind of evolving things or short snappy um, wave sequences as we heard before, or they can just be regular PCM or sample based sounds, multi samples. So here, for example, I've got a piano with some other layers as well. So let's just listen to the piano on it by itself first, really nice acoustic piano. but we could add maybe a secondary layer here. Or even a third. Here by bringing in the aftertouch there, and I could get that really cool reversed piano effect. We can also split these zones as well. So our four layers are completely flexible. I can do exactly what I want with them. So for instance, here we could have um, a, a bass area where we've got a wave sequencing pattern going on. But then on the top half, I could just have a nice pad. If I wanted to add something extra, you can see I've got layer C there, not turned on. 
So to turn that on, I just need to double tap it. And then I can hold down shift and page across and actually have a look what's on each layer. So layer C, as you can see there, is an initialized program. If I want to change that, I can just go into my list and then these buttons here become categories, which is really handy. So, so I wanted to have a little bit of percussion. Let's give myself some drums. So that's a kick drum or I might want to have um, some hi-hat. So if I'm happy with that, lock it in. And then I've got that on that layer, and of course, I can adjust the level there. So you can get some really monstrous sounds stacked up using up to four layers here. Some really amazing orchestral sounds like this one, for example. You can really hear that wave sequencing coming into play when I sustain the note. You hear it cycling through lots of different sounds. Just adds to that expression. So vector synthesis was a big part of the original wave station in the 90s as well, and it had a vector joystick on it, very much like what we've got on the wave state here. So what that allows you to do is either program in predetermined patterns of sound to evolve, or you can just control it in real time. So that's how I've got this set up here. So I can take this sound as an example. So there's quite a lot going on there. But I can actually use this to just crossfade between my layers. So layer A is my drum loop. B is the chugging guitar riff. C Just some incidental synth sounds, and then D are these big washy kind of pads. And what's nice is that you can then put it in between layers. So if you wanted to hear A and D together, or A and B maybe. So I'll put A and B there, or B and C. C and D. Or if you put it in the middle, it brings your whole mix in. We've built Aftertouch into the WaveState SE as well, so it gives you even more control of those sounds by using the Aftertouch. So what that means is that I can play a sound, and then I can dig into the keys to, on this occasion, filter the sound, or bring it back. You can hear it's going down there. And the aftertouch is completely programmable. You can assign it to multiple parameters, just like you can do any other controller. So each of these four layers has its full synth architecture, including its own filter, envelopes, effects, and LFOs as well, and arpeggiators. So you can really get in there and really sculpt each layer exactly as you want. Um, We've modeled some of our classic filters in here, including Poly 6, MS-20, and so on. And you've got nice hands-on controls of those. So if we select on this sound, for instance, this um, layer C, I can then start tweaking the filter.
the mod wheel will also affect the filter if that's been pre-programmed and again the mod wheel can be programmed to any parameter and even when you're going into things like your envelopes if you press the amplitude envelope for instance there you get this really nice visual representation of your attack and your release sustain and decay so you could really change up the sound That's where it's really useful to have the mod wheel assigning something like that so you can still play and use the mod wheel at the same time. So as well as the vector joystick I've already showed you and the mod wheel, two great controllers we've got to manipulate the sound and of course your aftertouch, we've got eight dedicated modulation knobs as well which are completely programmable and they can be per layer or they can be global as well. So I'll just give you a flavor of what sort of things they can do. Um, I've got a program here called the Upside Down. So as you can hear, there's kind of two wave sequences going on there. So I'm actually going to get rid of one of them. That's on layer B and let's just stick with layer A. Just so you can hear what's going on. So for instance here, we could change the speed. So I'll go slower. And also the timing. We can also do other kind of more radical things to the sound as well. Things like um, the pitch, so we can detune it. We can even, this one's set to change the waveform. So you can go from more like a square wave sound to a saw wave. Maybe bring in some like bit crunching. So let's put the whole thing back together. Have a listen. As well as the wave sequencing, you've also got an arpeggiator built in. In fact, you've got four because you've got one per layer, which makes it incredibly powerful. So you can just play a chord like this and it instantly gives you some motion. And of course, if you dig in with the aftertouch, you can manipulate the sound. If you press arpeggiator there, it'll tell you all the parameters for it. And you can also latch it very easily just by holding down shift, pressing arpeggiator, and you'll see it's flashing there. So now you know it's latched. So you may have noticed me using these buttons here to go through my sounds during the demo and that's because I'm in set list mode. You've actually got 16 slots there and four banks as well so you've got lots of places to save your favourite sounds into. But not only that, we've included smooth sound transitions in the WaveState SE as well. So what that means is that you can change sound without the previous sound cutting off so it makes everything really smooth and that includes the effects as well. So yeah, just a very musical kind of process when you're changing patches. So you can do things like this.
So you can always blend two sounds together by using that in a clever way. So another cool thing about the WaveState SE is that you can still use the editor librarian software with it as well from the original WaveState, which is brilliant. So we've got it running here, as you can see. You've got this editor screen. You've also got the librarian screen where you can see a whole list of all your performances and other data inside. So that's good for data management. But in the editor, it's brilliant because you can just play a note and you'll see immediately the wave sequencing running or I can see my other layers. If I press something on the hardware, it'll be reflected in the software automatically, instantly. It's also really good for seeing what modulations you've got set up. So you see on this cutoff control here, we've got some modulation going. So if I click that, you'll see on the right here what that's set to, for example. You've got tabs along the bottom, so you can see all the different parameters within your sound, whichever layer you're on. And it's also a good way to have a look at the effects in depth as well. We've got brilliant effects built into the WaveState SE, of course. And this gives you a really nice snapshot of all of the different effects blocks in there as well. There's a second piece of software as well called Sample Builder, and that allows you to import samples into the wave state in the right format. So that's brilliant because it means you can bring in those samples and start using them in the wave sequencing how you want to use it. There's a great randomize feature as well. So over here on the editor, you'll see there's a little dice. So you just click that and it says randomize, and then you can decide what you want to randomize about your sound. So that's great for exploring sound design. And you've got the same button here on the hardware as well. So you can do it there too. So connection wise on the WaveState SE, very well specced. Um, we've got the power of course, we've got audio outputs left and right there on jacks. So you can connect to a pair of monitors maybe, or a mixer or recording equipment. You've got a damper input for a sustain pedal. So that's really useful. Um, you've also got regular MIDI, so you can connect an external MIDI controller, maybe an 88 key weighted version if you wanted to do that. And you've got USB, so you can connect easily to a PC or a Mac to use that great editor software that we were looking at earlier. So there you go, that's the WaveState SE. Check out the link in the description below for any more details. See you next time. <laughs>